a new book is lifting the lid on Julia Gillard's tumultuous three years as Australia's first female Prime Minister. Written by her former speechwriter Michael Cooney, the Gillard Project reveals what actually went on behind closed doors in the back rooms of power. From mining to the economy to Afghanistan, Michael wrote the speeches that helped define Julia Gillard's program and vision for the country. His book talks openly about the highs and lows and the successes and failures. And Michael Cooney joins us now. Good morning to you, Michael. Uh, now, Julia Gillard says the essential task of great speechwriters is not to be themselves, but rather they must eloquently channel their principles' authentic voice into words that hope to inform and inspire. Beautifully. Did you write that? <laughs> no, I wish I had. <laughs> does that make sense to you? Would you agree with that? It does, and it does sound like Julia. Yeah. So it's not about being new, it's about how you think they would sound best. Yeah, both the ideas they have, like their actual opinion, but also the kind of words they use and the way they speak and think. It's, it's an interesting thing to try to get inside someone else's head. Yeah. Mm. Now, there were lots of speeches that you wrote for, for the Prime Minister that sort of, um, you know, give us an idea of, of what she was thinking. Her misogyny speech, which went global, who wrote that? I think Julia wrote it in the shower every day for three years. Really? <laughs> and then finally had a moment to really say it, you know. She, um, she had a lot of practice, I think, in her own head, thinking about the things she would say when that moment came. Mm. Do you remember that day? Yeah, oh, very vividly, yeah. yeah. I was sitting in the office writing some awful boring economy speech that no one will ever remember. <laughs> and I sort of, some uh, question time had finished and so I'd stop watching and I sort of looked over my shoulder at the TV and I could just see her going. Right. I thought I might turn the volume up and see what this is all about. So, Did you have any half, idea then about, about how global that would become? No, I mean, it was an interesting day because the, a lot of the political coverage kind of missed the importance of the moment yeah. really symbolically and how it would look not just around the world but also to lots of people in Australia who are outside the bubble. So mm, mm. the political commentary was very detailed about what happened in the parliament but, you know, overnight I had emails from friends in the White House, there was people in India wanted a photo with the PM a week later. The thing went around the world, it was amazing. Oh, I'd love to have friends in the White House. Um, <laughs> Michael, so is there a lesson in that for you and yours then when you're hearing her make that speech and go, OK, I can do all the beautiful work that I like sitting at the computer, but this is something truly passionate that runs really deep with her that she's worked on in the shower in front of the bathroom mirror yeah. a million times over. Yeah. Uh, so then you now have to replicate that for every other speech. Yes. <laughs> it sets the bar pretty high. I'm not sure we always got there. Yeah. But no, it does... Um it does tell you that you really do have to think about them, not you. Like yeah, it's, right. not, it's not, and that's the difference, I suppose, with writing the book and what Julia nicely says. Really, is that now I've got a chance to talk for me rather than to speak mm. for her. So. Uh, you've also worked for many other Labor leaders, including Kim Beasley and, and Mark Latham, um, all very different leaders. Yeah. Um, is there a particular day that stands out to you um, in your time working for those three leaders in particular? Wow, um, there's been some good days. Um, <laughs> going with Julia to the US Congress was pretty amazing. Yeah. Day. Um, you feel a long way from home and it's the middle of the night back home and you get messages from friends and um, weeks of work kind of crystallised in this big dramatic theatrical moment. And it was good too because it wasn't just politics, it was actually governing and it was about Australia and our place in the world. It was quite, it was a, an emotional sort of day really. Mm. Now Michael, your book takes us behind closed doors to sort of the back rooms of power, to the creaky corridors and the big leather chairs. <laughs> um, so. You know, who's running the show? You can tell us now. Who's running the show? Is it the Prime Minister of the day or the faceless men and all these other shadowy figures that we hear about? Oh, certainly, look, I only worked for one Prime Minister. I worked for a few different Labor leaders. Certainly in our office, there was no doubt who was in charge. Like, if you've ever been in a meeting with Julia Gillard, it's pretty clear who's chairing the meeting. So, um, uh, you know, our job as sort of faceless men was to make small things happen in the corners. But uh, I worked, my office was quite close to the cabinet room where the cabinet meets and you, you always knew that's the real centre of the government. Like that's where the real right. serious decisions are being made is by a group of politicians who have been elected and everyone else is kicked out of the room and that's when they actually decide what they're going to do to govern. Mm. Um, of those leaders that you've worked for, Kim Beasley and Mark Latham, how is Julia different? She's, um, Julia is the most kind of uh, normal basically. Julia is the person who um, puts other people first. Um, and she's also quite a reserved person. Um, she's a uh, very funny person to hang around with, but she's not someone who naturally kind of brings herself out and, and puts herself on the outside. So she's not an easy person to get to know in a way, but everyone who knows her loves her. Uh, certainly tumultuous times during her leadership. Are they good times then for a speechwriter? Are they the challenging times as opposed to day-to-day -day grind of boring economic speeches like you were talking about before? Like, so is a big news cycle a great day for you guys? Oh, it's exciting. I mean, it's one of the one of the pleasures of working in politics and working in government is that when something happens in the world, you actually have to do something about it. Mm. I remember when um, the night the Pope resigned and uh, we all got text messages and had to 
get to a computer and write a statement. It's right. sort of you feel like you're part of events. Um, mm. And uh, but on the other hand, often when you're a speechwriter, you're thinking about something for next week or another ten days' time. Mm. And sometimes you lose track of these dramatic events that happen that the press secretaries are taking care of, and you're just sitting in your windowless room, kind of grinding away on something mm. for next week. Okay. It must have been an amazing time for you. You know, we hear that politics is terrible for your health, your age. You know, a, a million years. He's 22. Only, he looks good. I was going to say 14. <laughs> Pretty well. Um, you know, how do you look back on your, on your time? I, uh, oh, with great, um, great fondness. Actually, the thing I really miss is the people and the unity of the group mm. that we had. Like the part of what I try and do in the book is talk a bit about what staffing was like. Mm. Uh, and we probably don't have a great professional reputation in Australian society. Political staff, uh, maybe somewhere near journalists, we're all sort of suffering yeah. the same problems. And um, I try and tell a bit of a sympathetic story about what those people are like. They're from lots of different walks of life and doing this pretty amazing thing and mostly enjoying it too, being, feeling proud of it and, and having fun. Uh, OK, great to talk to you today. We just got an SMS from Andrew O'Keefe. He wants to know how much you charge to write a Logie speech for him. <laughs> a dollar a word. A dollar a word. That's like, good. Isn't it 20 Innocent. words? That you, <laughs> that's all you get before the music starts. It's yes. 20 bucks. Yeah, uh, thanks. The book looks great. Thank you. It looks fantastic. And it is called The Gillard Project. For more details, you can head over to our website. Thanks so much for thanks coming in, Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. Thanks really for interesting. Thank you.